Today, I'm getting the inside scoop from the ladies of the general public and asking them the question, which body parts do girls simply love to be touched? Now, there are certain parts of a girl that when you touch them, drive the us fuck? girls crazy. Now for me, I know if I'm relaxing, watching a film, and a guy lightly rubs his fingers down my back, well, I just go absolutely crazy. And you can guarantee that I missed the end of that film. But that is just me. Let's find out what all the other ladies think. Which body part do you love to be touched? I would say like the jawline, like Ooh. just here. So like say if a guy's going in for a kiss and they touch like your jaw, that's it's like romantic. What's your biggest turn on in a guy? What can a guy do to just get the basement flooded? If he's funny, if he can make me laugh, comedian. He's so funny guy. My biggest turn on bro, a lady who can cook some nice linguine pasta, a nice meal, you know what I'm saying? Perfect. How do you like to be touched around the waist? Lay it on me. Oh. oh! Oh, I like it. We're adults here. What's your favorite sex position? Like, let's be honest. My lower back. Ooh, and why do you say the lower back? It's quite like a protective place. If they feel there, they're like, they're on you and they've got, they can kind of guide you along. I have to say my bum. Oh. I think. <laughs> cheeky cheeky. And why? It's just, it just makes you feel good. People like acknowledging that it looks nice. Okay, so how would you like to be touched? Go. Oh, do it. Perfect. Oh, oh do it. Perfect. Miss Riley Ray, can you please come on down to the Cheek Slang Council and please elaborate and go further in depth on how us men can turn these girls on and get her wetter than a super soaker. How can we get the basement flooded down there? We would really appreciate that. This is Tips for Dicks with Riley Reed. Tip number one, never forget foreplay. Just as much as you like a chase, so do girls. I, for one, love dry humping. It's one of my favorites. I love kissing. Kiss her neck, kiss her arms, you know? Be all sensual with her before you get all fucking hands-on and dirty. Foreplay, number one tip. We thank you for those tips. Miss Riley Ray, you said you like kissing. A little bit of foreplay, but I have a quote here earlier from your videos saying that you love BBC. Miss Riley Ray, can you please elaborate your love for the British Broadcasting Company? My gosh, what a wholesome lady. I really hope my daughter turns out to be like her one day. <laughs> well, it seems that women like to be touched all over, from their head all the way down to their knees, but I found a lot of ladies said their back, their waist, and their bum. And you don't have to be gentle about it, gentlemen. Give them a good old hearty slap on the bum, and they referring me. Please don't wait me, that's the only time I see you. Welcome. I can fall in love, you're my favorite senorita. She the first one. We welcome you guys to the Cheek Slain headquarters. So today's coverage is going to be about the gentleman's handbook of 16 ways on how to make a girl obsessed with you. Gentlemen, this has potential to put you guys in the Cheek Slain Hall of Fame. So I organized these 16 commandments on which I thought was the most important. So right off the bat, I listed reason number 12 as number one in my book. Knock her down a few notches because we now live in a digital age of social media. Have a look at this. We have all these manginas literally worshiping the ground she walks on. Look at this. Oh, absolutely divine, amazingly gorgeous. She is very gorgeous to me. <laughs> this tells me that these guys are very desperate. Do a sip. They are willing to suck a fart right out of her ass cheeks. <laughs> Oh, I taste shit. They literally treat these girls as if she's the prime minister of North Korea. And number 12 states, beautiful 
women are used to getting attention from the male species. So if you are looking to hook up with the beauty, you need to knock her off balance a little. And this is very important because understanding hypergamy, hypergamy has no equality. It does not date across, it does not date somebody on the same level as them. It only dates somebody who is high level status and it only dates up. And fellas, what you guys need to understand is that you have these one million trillion simp manginas trying to help her solve her problem. My brothers stand out and be her problem. Don't be her therapist, be the reason why she sees a therapist. You have to knock her off the pedestal a little bit. Sometimes you just gotta pull a Gordon Ramsay. Right, don't whistle at me, I'm not your fucking dog, yeah? You look more like a dog than I do. Fuck off with you. Two salmon well Shut. done. Can you just shut the fuck up for 30 seconds? Two salmon well done. One lamb, one Wellington. Yes? We yes, share. Yes. Can we just get some all up top of Let's go. Just ignore these bimbos. Hey, Scott. Yes, sir. Sure. Two salmon well done, yes? Nobody will listen to us. I'm wondering where the fucking food is. Do you get it? Service and standards are far more important than some fucking bimbo. You guys might think this is funny, but this damn near has a lot of truth to it because Gordon Ramsay does not let these bimbos, these cream gobblers, knock him off of his vision, his purpose, his mission. He tells him to f fuck off with Because in the name of the cheek pounding prophecy, verse one, a man invests in his relationships by choosing his purpose in growth. Because if you make her your purpose, you shall lose both. Because in the name of the cheek slaying collapulations, it states, if you give her the crown, she shall let you down. But if you put her in second place, she shall always be the one to chase. Because if you penalize your girl, this allows her to know where she stands with you and she gets too comfortable. And when she gets too comfortable, you better best believe that the disrespect is about to come. Cause all fucking hell is gonna break loose. And fellas, if you allow your girls to get comfortable, this is going to happen to you. <laughs> Father Future, what do we have to say about these creeps? Gobblers. Office 8 a.m. Monday, Monday she yours. She yours at 8 a.m. This weekend, I love her. Are you having an anxiety attack right yeah. now? Tango down. Take a break? Yeah. Here, here, we'll come this way. If we analyze the Leonardo DiCaprio and the Jeff Bezos situation with our cheek slang shutting gun. Fuck it right in the pussy. And if you guys look at this with the RP lens, Jeff Bezos' girlfriend is obviously way too comfortable in the relationship where she feels that she can disrespect and do this right in front of him. Leonardo DiCaprio is never going to have this problem because first of all, he does not penalize women. He's dating multiple girls, which creates that competition anxiety, which means that these girls are on their best behavior when they're with him. And Leonardo DiCaprio, just for my cheek slang analysis, He's been around a lot of girls, which means he understands female nature or he watches RP content. Because think about it, Leonardo DiCaprio is never married. He never moves in with a woman because he does not want to put his wealth at risk. He's living that life of abundance. But Jeff Bezos, he's alpha as hell, but he's blue-pilled, which he allows women to walk all over him and disrespect him. Because in the name of the cheek slang collaborations, if you're a man and she walks all over you and you don't have a spine, she shall leave you behind and your cheek slang invitation shall get declined. Access denied. A lot of girls won't tell you this, but I will. All women secretly crave a man who does not tolerate disrespect, a man who values his time, a man who aggressively ruthlessly, ambitiously goes after what he wants in life. A man who has both financial security, but yet he is adventurous and fun. A man who is going to call her out on her bullshit because women, they are hardwired to be with men with strength. This is why female nature exists, to weave out all the pussified men. 
all the fucking beta males. Oh, yeah! Hold on, yeah. oh, oh, again. Oh, shit. Yeah. Look at all these beta males. Because a man without boundaries, a man without standards, is like damn near in the friend zone because a woman will disrespect you if you allow her. A woman will waste your time if you allow her. A woman will make you her second option if you allow her. My brothers, set the frame. Always remember this. You are Batman, she is Robin. You are Goku and she is Piccolo. Now my brothers, which leads me on to point number 14, which is reason number two in my books. It's reverse psychology. You never give women what they want. You have to switch it up. Roll the clip. Honest. Yeah. I want him to be just as affectionate as me. Okay. But if I call you, don't pick up all the time. Got it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm gonna be left wondering, what's he doing? Got it. Cause that's, that's kind of, cause though. it's like, if you on your shit and you working hard, you're not always worried about me. And for some reason that's kind of hot. Cause it's like you working on you. So that's a green flag. Yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Green flag. Always is... pay attention, but don't pick up every time I call. Green flag. Yeah. Reason number 14, how to use reverse psychology. It states, this just means give them the opposite of what they are expecting or what they want. Do this and you increase your man value. And she's going to want you just like she wants that limited edition purse. Now, fellas, I want you guys to listen to me very carefully because I'm going to combine 13 and 15 all together because this all falls under the category of reverse psychology. Now, pay attention very closely. It's gonna make sense at the end. Number 13 states, master manipulator of emotions. It states, when it comes to women, they think first with their hearts, which means if you want to gain emotional control over a woman, you need to play with her softer side. Now, number 15, masterfully trick her. This states, this one plays with the mind but the end result is a girl becoming obsessed with you. If you act a certain way all the time, you are predictable. And when you change your usual tendencies, you will throw her off guard and subconsciously draw her closer to you. May the chief slain fathers ascend down from the gates of heaven and enlighten us and bless us with the chief slain declaration of independence. According to the book of the cheek slaying of divine intervention, verse 11, it states, whatever a woman says, do the opposite because women are backwards as hell. That's why her favorite position is when you hit it from the back. Doggy style. Finish her. Oh. Fuck yeah. Because it's better getting it from the back, man. Now, my fellow cheek slaying vessels of the world, Cheek slam collaboration scripture one. It states, if she does not treat you like a king every day, she is not the one to stay. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and let me make this very abundantly clear. 13 and 14 says, manipulate woman. I did not like how they word that because controlling and manipulating woman, only beta male simp men donnas do that because they do that out of fear to get compliance from their woman. But strong masculine men, cheek slayers, we lead and we protect our woman. And all this is, fellas, is you do not put a woman before your purpose. You should be grinding, not trying to fake these strategies. Because in the book of the ass clapping Prometheus, scripture 11, it states, if you focus on your purpose and grind, the ass cheeks shall flock behind. Now, to really break down 13, 14, and 15 to a crisp, to give you guys perspective, how a woman sees the world, she sees the world through an emotional glass. So any man who can communicate the language of emotions will resonate deeply with women. These guys are also known as the players, the cheek slayers, because they understand women. Fellas, you lead women with your logic, but you communicate with women with emotion. This is also known as womanese because if you communicate with women with your logic, you're going to bore her to death like this chode right here. Oh, bro, it's just like, dude, you get the best barrels ever, dude. Just like you pull in and you just get spit right out of them. 
and you just drop in and just smack the lip, whoop, just drop down, snap, bah. and then after that, you just drop in, you just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted like that. Since men are logical creatures, we want reassurance. But here are the five questions you shall never ask a woman for reassurance. Fellas, I did this back in my beta male simp mangina days and trust me, I rose from the undead and came back to tell you guys a story. And if you guys want to dry a woman's pussy up like the Sahara Desert, you ask her these five questions. Dickin is as dry as a fucking camel's asshole in a fucking desert storm. Look how stringy that is. If you guys want to dry a woman's pussy up like the Sahara Desert, you ask her these five questions. Do you like me? Do you think I'm handsome? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Like when people ask questions like, you know, do you want to go here or do you want to... No, no, no. Is it, is it like, is it okay if we... Yeah, no, no, no. You tell me. Demand it. You say, I want to go to this place. Do, do you want to go? And then, you know... Why are you taking so long to text back? And why are you ignoring my text? Can I kiss you, hug you, hold your hand? Cause I'm a little bitch. Now that's really dry. Look, it's just like being in the Sahara Desert. Look, it's like a mouthful of sand. Am I worthy of you? You're probably have a lot of guys texting you, right? See, fellas, always be chivalrous and always be a gentleman. But for fuck's sakes, don't be a beta male simp mangina and give off insecure vibes because fellas, when you are needy, the more you chase, when you're chasing something, it's constantly running away from you. But you will never lose what you attract. And you attract these girls by becoming the best of a version of yourself and building your confidence. And then now we have, man, we have these cream gobblers to come speak to the gospel about a man's confidence. What is the most attractive uh, feature about a guy confidence-wise? His posture. When a man's like, Open arm, like head up. Now, fellas, let's define confidence. Today's word is confidence. The C stands for comfortable in your own flesh. Because every time you look in that damn mirror, you tell yourself, I'm a fine specimen of a man and I'm a freak of nature of human movements inside the bedroom and outside the bedroom. And the O stands for only positive vibes. Be relentless. You be ferocious. Perfect. Perfect. And anybody who brings that negative energy into your life, tell them gooch face putas to suck my ass. And the N stands for I do this every single day. The N stands for no fucks given. We don't give a fuck! It's us! We don't give a fuck! My brothers, the letter F in confidence stands for fuck that bitch to sleep. Whoa! Wrong clip. We're gonna edit that one out. That was absolutely uncalled for. But the letter F stands for ferociousness, fun, fantastic, finger licking good. Because that is what you are. Do not let anybody tell you shiza. And the I stands for I don't give a fuck. And the D stands for don't ask for the number. Demand the number. And the E stands for ego. Kill that shit. Because the ego only sets to divide and separate. A bad day for your ego is a good day for the soul. Holy mother! The letter N stands for never stop grinding. The letter C stands for comfort is a place where manginas and weak men are born. But hard times is where great men are manifested. The letter E stands for enjoy life. Another day alive is another day in paradise. My brothers, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Now, which leads me on to the next point. Mystery needs to be floating through the air because Coach Corey Wayne once said, it is scientifically proven that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. Why do you guys think women love the Fifty Shades of Grey novel? These dark, kinky movies getting tied up and shit. Oh yeah? Well, why should I? Because I'm going to say, please. <laughs> 
because they love the mystery. They love the challenge. They love the chase. It gives them an adrenaline rush. It gives them that excitement, something to look forward to, which leads me on to the next point. Guys, get adventurous. Riley Ray, you may now speak to the gospel. Tip number two. One of my favorite things that I don't think is done often enough, and maybe it's because people are too scared, is I love to play in public. There's something so exciting and naughty when you spice up your sex life and do something where you maybe shouldn't be doing it. Maybe in the car parking lot you try to get a little naughty or in the movie theater. Spice it up a little. See if you can convince her to be a little naughty in public places. That's one of my favorites. Fellas, you have to switch it up. When you're smashing on the bed all day, it gets boring. Take her out to the park and fuck her in the middle of the forest. About the fuck? About the fuck? Take her to the grocery store and fuck her in the middle of the fruit aisle in the grocery store. Stick your finger in the loop of my tag. Switch it up. Have fun, fellas. That's what this channel is all about. It's about getting outside of your comfort zone, trying new things, and not giving a bollocks. See, life needs to be a balance. You need to have a social life, and you need to have a life full of purpose, meaning. That's the point of this channel, because I want all my cheek slang soldiers to succeed. We're prospering over here. And fellas, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. Sending you guys many blessings. I don't know how much longer I can hold this. <laughs> I'm about to bust.